Well, I made it. That's the headline. By Jane Endicott, reporter. That's my byline. Rancho Soups present Jane Endicott, reporter. The first of a new series of dramatic episodes in the life of a bright and charming American girl in the world of today. Thrilling real-life stories sparkling with humor, romance, and adventure. Brought to you by your friends, the makers of Rancho Soups. And now, friends, perhaps you'd like to meet the proud sponsor, a line of canned soups that started up just a little while ago in a small town in the West and grew and grew and grew. Today, you'll find Rancho Soups everywhere along the Pacific Coast and in Montana, Idaho, Utah, Nevada, and now in Arizona. Rancho is the brand name of the Sunnyvale Packing Company. And these Sunnyvale people got to thinking one day that if good soups could be canned, why couldn't they be made even better in the West, where we all know the best vegetables and the best of everything else is found? So they went to work and adapted four fine old Western soup recipes to modern canning methods, named them Rancho Soups and put them on the market. Good Western soups for Western tastes and hearty Western appetites. Now there are seven Rancho Soups, and you'll find them in gay, shiny black label cans at your favorite grocers. Rancho Vegetable, Tomato, Asparagus, and Pea Soups. Rancho Chicken Gumbo, Cream of Mushroom, and Chicken Noodle. You'll find two sizes at your grocers. And because they're made right here in the West, you'll find Rancho Soups at amazingly low prices. Try one of the Rancho Soups today, and see if it isn't the most delicious soup you ever tasted. Now, Jane Endicott, reporter. Our first story entitled, No Job for a Lady. Here's your headline, kid. Thieves wreck chemical plant. Yes, three times have cat-footed burglars entered the Westburn Dyan chemical plant over at Westburn. The rifle stores of nitroglycerin manufactured there. But the third time proved fatal. What exactly happened, no one will ever know. But about three o'clock this morning... A terrific explosion leveled an entire wing. Now listen to this, Pete, editorial for tomorrow's paper. The Sword of Damocles, that's the title. Too long have the citizens of Westburn stood close to sudden death. The press chronicle draws attention to the fact that the workers at the Westburn Dyan chemical plant deserve at least a pretense of protection. But they're not getting it. The premises of the plant are open to all who would enter for whatever purpose. We make this statement in direct contradiction to that of Captain James Endicott, Director of Research at Westburn, who recently declared no person could enter without the proper credentials. We make the statement that anyone can enter, credentials or no credentials, any time he wishes to enter. In a small private laboratory in the research department of the Westburn Dyan Chemical Plant, a spare, gray-haired man works alone in the twilight. A door opens softly. His daughter enters. Dad. Eh? Oh, Jane, I didn't hear you. It's nearly six. The second shift will be on soon. Don't you think it's time you went home and got some sleep? Oh, I'm all right, Jane. You go on. Don't wait for me. I, I've got to finish up. Oh, hand me that burner, will you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Did you um, read the editorial in this afternoon's Press Chronicle? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So unfair. Whoever wrote it didn't know what he was talking about. I'd just like to see him try to get in without permission. He'd be thrown out so fast... Oh, it doesn't matter. Since those thieves blew up the North Wing and themselves as well, Pete Flaherty hasn't had much to write about. Fella has to do something to whip up local interest and keep people reading his newspaper. Well, if he's so hard up for local news, perhaps he needs someone to go out and get it for him. You know, Dad, he could use a reporter, couldn't he? There he is, running a newspaper all by himself. He... <laughs> no, Jane, no. Working for Pete Flaherty is no job for a lady. Besides, haven't you got a job? Dad, as your secretary, I'm the most useless person in the plant, and you know it. But, Jane, somebody has to be my secretary. Might as well be you. You don't need a secretary. And it isn't very pleasant knowing that the people you work with realize that the only reason you have a job is because your father is head of research. Well, there could be worse reasons. Well, what do you want to do? Well, Mother and I were talking it over last night. I see. Then it's all settled. Oh, no, no, not at all. I want to know what you think. If, if I really went after a newspaper job, and I know... 
And I'll bet you know I could handle it. I could... What's the matter? That door behind you. Well, come in. Thank you. I wasn't sure if I'd come to the right office. Oh, this is a private laboratory. So I see. I was looking for Captain Endicott. They sent me from one place to another around this joint till I'm dizzy. Uh, who sent you? Oh, various people around the place. Oh. I'm from the Press Chronicle. Captain Endicott told me to meet him here. No person is allowed inside unescorted, Mr. Uh... Jervis. Anthony Jervis. How are Particularly you? Particularly not here in the research department. What? You mean this is the... Well... I didn't realize I was on sacred ground to take my shoes off. You're not funny. Uh, you say you know Captain Endicott? Why, you bet we're practically bosom buddies. Uh, say, Miss, uh, haven't I seen you before someplace? Mr., uh, since when have you been working on the Press Chronicle? Since two days ago. I'm new to this town, but I hope to know it better, much better. The name's Jervis, Anthony Q. Jervis. Oh, Q, huh? Yeah, Quintus. Mm. Silly, isn't it? <laughs> Some people say it's Q for quits. Quits? Yeah. There's a rumor that when I was born, my father looked down at me and then at my mother and said, let's call it quits. <laughs> uh, young man, before you go, would you mind pressing that button behind you? I've got to get on with my work. Why, of course. There you are. Oh, I guess I've been a nuisance, haven't I? Yes. But could you tell me where... Say, isn't that a high-temperature electric furnace I've turned on? Huh? Oh, uh, yes, 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 indeed. Yeah. You've uh, seen them before, I suppose. Never. Say, isn't it time for you people to knock off after all? It's after six, isn't it? Yes. Were you counting on it? Hmm? Yes, sir. Did you sound the alarm, sir? Oh, yes. Uh, come in, Stephens. I think you'd better put this young man under arrest. Uh, wait, uh, wait a minute. What goes all on? All right, you. Come along. Hey, now, wait a minute. Take your mitts uh, off me. What is this? All right, this? boys. Come in and get him. No, you can't do this to me. I'm a reporter. I want to see Captain Endicott. Call my paper. Call Pete Flaherty. Get outside. Hey, cut it out, will you? Get out. Hey, come on. Cut it out. Well... Pretty neat, Dad, making him press that alarm button himself. I, I, I wonder who he is. Do you think he really works for the Press Chronicle? Well, you might call up and find out. Uh, there's the phone. Okay. Uh, hello, switchboard. Uh, will you please get the Press Chronicle office for me? And Father, reporter or no reporter, that young man's going to stay in jail for a while. Yes, miss. I said Captain Andy gets car, all right. I was just waiting here for you to show up and verify it. Okay, Hannah, you can turn loose that guy in cell five. Thank you, Sergeant. And we could hold him for trespassing, you know. Well, we'd rather not, thank you, just the same. Do him good to spend the night in the jail. It was time he was taught a lesson. You know him? I'll say. Just joined up with the paper, invested money in it. Moved into town with his mother a couple of weeks ago. I guess Flaherty knows a sucker when he sees one. Oh. And here he comes now. Well, sorry to see you leave so soon. Uh, the pleasure's all mine, Sergeant. Well, if it isn't test tube Tessie, the laboratory Lulu. Yeah, and you can thank her for not having to spend the night in the cell. Now, scram, beat it. Why, Miss, uh, you mean you? One of these days, Mr. Jervis, those smart-alecky tricks of yours are going to get you into trouble. Good night, Sergeant. Uh, good night, hey, Miss. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. I want to apologize. You needn't bother. Oh, but I want to. I'm sorry, I really am. I didn't mean to cause you any trouble. Oh. I want to thank you. Perfectly all right. I suppose your reason for crashing the chemical plant was to cause a number of people to lose their jobs. Hmm? Oh, no, it's not that at all. The Press Chronicle is merely fighting for the good of the entire community, the common interest. The plant stops operating through inefficiency or carelessness, Westburn would be practically a ghost town. Mm. Then where would my paper be? Hey, see how it ties up? It means something to me. Oh, now, oh, those old codgers at the gates aren't tough enough. You know how I got past them? It'll give you a laugh. I got a big yellow badge used to identify one of the poultry judges at last year's fair. Mm. Stuck it on my chest, and that old guy at the gate didn't even look twice when I walked in. Very clever, Mr. Jervis. You'll have a fine story, won't you? And how. Just wait till old Emicott reads it. Your bosom buddy. Yeah. I did want to see him, though. <laughs> Actually, I've never laid eyes on him. <laughs> I knew that. Oh, did you? How? He was the gentleman in the laboratory who ordered your arrest. Oh, well... What? You mean that skinny old guy would... That was Captain Endicott. Oh. oh, you're kidding me. He didn't look like any old soldier to me. Captain Endicott holds the DSC, the Croix de Guerre with palms, and a few other souvenirs of the last war, including a silver plate in his skull. Oh. I guess I'm not very bright, am I? Such humility is more than refreshing. Well, here's my car. 
Good night, Mr. Jervis. Oh, wait, I want to thank you again for what you did. I mean, getting me out of the Bastille. That's perfectly all right, Mr. Jervis. At the very worst, your partner, Mr. Flaherty, would have sobered up enough by morning to post bail for you. Oh, you're an optimist. Good night, Mr. Jervis. No, wait, I left my car in front of the plant. Would you mind driving me over to the newspaper offices? Your car is parked across the street where the police put it, as you very well know. If you'll step away from the door... My word, so it is. (laughs) Why are you such a liar? (laughs) I don't know. I guess I'm just a bad boy. (laughs) Look, Mr. Jervis, you're a grown man. Act like one. Stop posing. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, good night, Miss... uh, What is your name? Jane Endicott. Jane... What was that? Endicott. And mm-hmm. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> well, good night. Yeah, well, wait. Captain Endicott is your... My father, yes. Oh, everything has to happen to me. I repeat, good night, Mr. Jervis. All right, get in. What? Wait a minute, where are you going? I'm going with you. Come on, get in. I'll tell you about it on the way to the Press Chronicle office. Miss Endicott, I have a proposition I think you'll be interested in. Let's go. <laughs> your dinner, Dad. Thanks, Jane. Oh, uh, did you release that reporter? Yes, I just sort of had to. Oh, um, how much longer will you be here at the plant? Oh, not long, not long. I suppose he'll spend the rest of the night writing how badly he's been mistreated. I don't think so, Dad. Don't you? You don't think he will? No, because I'm writing that story myself. What? <laughs> I am. Cross me off your factory payroll, Dad. I've joined the Press Chronicle staff. Are you joking? No, not a bit. I'm the woman's page editor. Mr. Jervis gave me the job. He owns half the paper. Uh, You mean that young man who... (laughs) Yes. Funny, isn't it? Uh, My word is (laughs) sudden, isn't it? I hardly believe it myself yet. But, but Jane, uh, does it offer you any future? Future? Oh, well, it's a bit early yet, Dad, but... He's waiting outside for me now. Good night, darling, and try to get home before we do, won't you? (laughs) We'll tell you more about Jane Endicott in just a moment. Now, when you first try Rancho Soups, friends, notice that they taste homemade, like the soups that Mother used to make. There's a good reason for that. In addition to top-quality Western ingredients and Western recipes proved popular through the years, Rancho soups are simmered for hours, just as you would make them at home. That is, if you had the patience and the time. The slow simmering develops every ounce of flavor. Gives Rancho pea soup, for example, a full, satisfying flavor that's not a great deal unlike mildly roasted almonds. The tomato soup tastes a lot like rich, red, ripe tomatoes right off the vine. And the asparagus soup, well, it tastes like spring. All Rancho soups are condensed. And a small can provides generous, substantial servings for four people. And they're all sold at prices so low that you can afford the luxury and nourishment of soup every day for lunch and dinner both if you wish. Every can of Rancho Soup is made under the continuous inspection service of the United States Department of Agriculture. And every can is guaranteed. Your grocer will return all your money if you don't agree that Rancho Soup is the most delicious of its kind that you ever tasted. By Jane Endicott, reporter. And darn good, too. Next Wednesday, Rancho Soups will bring you another story in the life of Jane Endicott, reporter. The story of Jane Endicott, reporter, is brought to you over these same stations every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Sunnyvale Packing Company, makers of those increasingly popular Rancho Soups. Try one of the seven delicious Rancho Soups today. Your announcer, Tom Hanlon. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Try something new in brick oven baked beans. Hearthside baked beans. Baked in small earthen pots, each hearthside baked bean fairly drips with an authentic New England flavor. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 